What's up guys, it's your boy Tremel. I just wanted to say that I have a new project that's out. It's called Mixed Feelings. It's on all streaming platforms. I would hope that you would go and check it out. It's a really good feel of an album. It's got everything you need and more. It's got R&B, it's got a little bit of pop, it's got a little bit of hip hop. It's everything that you need and more. It's out all streaming platforms, like I said. Please check me out and you can also follow me at I am underscore Tramel. That's I am underscore T-R-A-M-E-L. Check me out, I hope to hear from you. What's going on you guys? This be your boy Scotty by Nature TV and we're here early this morning for another episode of Yes for the Mess you guys. We got two things to discuss, two things to talk about, all right? I don't know how long this video was going to be. I don't see it being too long or at all, but you know, I might just get to ranting and raving just a tad bit, but you don't, you know, you never know, child. But before we get into um today's mess, I want to send a special, special, special shout out to my sisters, my girls, Jamie That's Me, Boundy Blue, and Niecy Dixon. They were featured in People Magazine for their interview with Candy Burris. I just want to say that this has been a lit week for, uh, for me and my friends and my YouTube peers. This has been a lovely week for all of us who had the chance to interview with Candy. Um, I'm still on a high from this situation. Um, I'm probably going to be bringing it up all week. I'm still not over this. I probably would never get over this. This has been the biggest week for all of us, and I'm so glad that we all got to share it together. So if you haven't seen the interview with Jamie, Bundy, and um, Nisi with Candy, go ahead and watch it, child. It was, it was, it was lovely. Fantastic. All right. However, we're going to go ahead and get into today's tea. Now, the first things first, we're going to start off on a sad note. This is this this was very unexpected. And um, everybody's getting him mixed up with Tevin, Tevin Campbell. But um, but, you know, it's easy to get them mixed up because they both have those, you know, huge powerful voices now if you guys don't know who this is this is jesse powell and jesse powell is most known for his hit record you you know it came out back in 1998 um if you don't know how the song goes i'll try to sing a little bit for you and it goes like this baby it's you the way you are the way you talk the way you say my name this stuff the way you move me the way you sued me, the way you speak so into the night. Every morning you rise and open your eyes. I just want in a win. I just want to be your horse from this day forward. I know I can't sing, but um, that was the best that I could do, honey. That was the best that I could fucking do, okay? However, we're going to go ahead and get into the story because it comes from TMZ. And I did not realize that he was 51 years old. But, I mean, you came out and I was like nine. I was like in the fourth grade when that came out, so go figure. But according to TMZ, um, Jesse Powell died at his home in Los Angeles, um, according to his family. His sister Tamara broke the sad news on Tuesday night on IG, but did not reveal a cause of death. She wrote, it is with a heavy heart that we announce the passing of our beloved son, brother, and uncle Jesse Powell. Jesse loved music and he especially loved his fans who supported him throughout his career. We want you all to know that you meant the world to him. Tamara asked for privacy so her family could grieve and celebrate her brother's death. He was born in Gary, Indiana, and he got his first musical break in his early 20s after a music producer saw him perform at a local talent show. He was signed to a record label and he released his first album in 1996. Throughout the mid to late 90s, Jesse enjoyed some moderate success, but he really hit his stride with the release of his 1998 song, You, which rocketed to number two on the Billboard R&B charts. His second album, Bout It, was certified gold after it was shot to number 15 on the charts. Jesse also won high praise for his four octave vocal range. He he retired after his fourth record was released in 2003. Jesse was 51. Rest in peace. Now, you know, they did mention his sister, Tamara. And if you don't know, um, his sister, Tamara, was a part of the duo Trina and Tamara. I think it's Tamara. 
was it Tamara or Tamara? I think it was Trina and Tamara. They had that one. They had that one song because it came out in '99. I remember because I was in the fifth grade, and the song was like the song went like this: I don't know what you came here for, because if you didn't want to dance, you stood to stay at home. Everybody on the floor tonight. I don't know what you came here for. That was my shit. Oh my god. Oh lord, that's just taking me back. But yeah, so that was the that was the gist of it. Now we don't really know much about Jesse's um personal life. We don't know because after he came out with you, I know he came out with another with another album not too long. I think he came out with two more albums after that, and then we didn't hear nothing else from Jesse Powell. You know, we'll just hear his songs on the radio stations. You know, like on the oldie stations and stuff like that. You know, but we never really just knew um nothing about his personal life. You know, people, you know, make up rumors and shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? So we really didn't know um, everything that went on with him. But um, I just want to say rest in peace to Jesse Powell. That was something that was not expected at all because let me tell you something. Um, even at the age of nine, you was my song, baby. Okay. I used to love me some you. That was my goddamn song. And um, couldn't nobody tell me shit. That's, that song is played at everybody's wedding. Anybody wedding I was in or anybody's wedding that I attended, that song was always in rotation when they walked their asses down that aisle, honey, okay? So he will always have a classic record with you. Always. He will always have a classic record with that song. So I just want to say my condolences to Jesse Powell and for those that's in the R&B community and all of that stuff. Um, just give him his flowers. He deserved it for that one classic. I know he had other songs released before and after that particular song, but that song will always be memorable for everybody that's R&B lover. So shout out to um, Jesse Powell and his family and may you rest in peace. So we're going to go ahead and get to the main thing and that is um, Miss K. Michelle um, Myth Hits and um, Carlos King. Now, as you guys already know, Carlos King has been in the news ever since my boy, House of Aaron, sat down with Candy on a Monday and asked her what was her beef with Carlos King. Candy revealed that um, her beef with Carlos King was that he tried to steal her life story in regards to her group escape. And she told a lot of tea in regards to that. Aaron's interview went viral. OK, it's all over the place. So if you haven't seen it by now, you better go and check it out right now. All right. So that's been a thing. And the Internet has been on fire talking about Carlos King. They've been eating his ass up. They've been talking about him. They've been saying that they knew that he was a snake and they've been knowing this and they've been knowing that, honey. So. As everybody's been talking about Carlos and what he did to Candy, somebody else decided that they wanted to come out and talk about what uh, Carlos allegedly did to them. Now on now on uh, not media takeout, but on the neighborhood talk when they posted the story in regards to House of Aaron talking to Candy about this situation, um, Miff Hits came into the chat and said that's pretty effed up he's also the one that told k michelle to tell people i hit her before all for ratings k told me my brother right way to go los okay so that's that's what he said then also um it was also said in the comments but you did hit her have several seats and then somebody else said say what and then Memphis said never and then he said yep kim told me he coached her on what to say and how to say it so her storyline would get ratings f me huh mm, mm, mm. okay so y'all already know that i'm probably about to go in right y'all know this don't it because y'all know that I am a, a, a big K. Michelle fan. Y'all know I've met her before. That lady knows me. So y'all already know I'm going to go in. Well, she don't really know me, know me, but she knows who the fuck I am. So, yeah. But um, here's my thing. Y'all already know that I'm about to let his ass have it. Y'all are. Y'all already know that I'm about to let him have it because he just really needs to just need to shut the fuck up. Because who the fuck asked him anything? That's the first thing. So let's start off there. First of all, Miff Hits. You are always looking for a moment. Let's make that clear. You are always looking for a moment. You looking for a moment because why are you going to sit up here? Because first of all, you said, let's make it clear because he didn't say that you lied. This is what you said. You said that 
he told K. Michelle to tell people I hit her before. He didn't have to tell her shit. She been saying that you hit her since 2009. For those of us that's been following K. Michelle long before she was on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, K. Michelle came out and said that this man put hands on her way back in 2009. Do we have to go? Do we have to talk about this? Do we have to talk about this again? Like, because... This nigga seemed to forget that this has been going on for many, many years now. K. Michelle been said that you put your hands on her a long damn time ago. So what are you saying, bro? What are you, what are you talking about? Carlos didn't have to tell her shit. She said this back in 2009. So for those of you who was not following K. Michelle before she was on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, um, and for those of you who don't know her backstory, K. Michelle was signed to Myth Hits record label, which was Hits Committee, which was, um, which was signed through Jive, okay? And um, he was her um, A&R, he was her boss, also her lover, another Tommy Mottola, Mariah Carey situation, right? Um, they got into an altercation in Memphis right before um, a show. They got into a physical altercation. That was like around maybe June, July of 2009, I assume, I think. I know it was over the summer of 2009. Um, on her What's the 901 mixtape, there is a song that's called Where They Do That At, which is very um, famous for the piano um, sing-along, because because the song is very different from what we first saw on YouTube. Um, she sung the song a cappella on YouTube, sitting on top of a piano while a dude was playing the piano. And in the words of the song, she says... Um, I don't understand how a man could look at his woman and want to throw hands. She was talking about myth hits. Then she did another song that was also on the What's the 901 mixtape called What Kind of Man Are You? When she said, you become the enemy when you put your hands on me. That was also about myth hits. So this was all in 2009, long before Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So Carlos did not have to tell her anything, okay? So let's let's continue on with the story. So after that, he constantly denied that he ever put hands on her. This was before she was even known like that. She was still an underground R&B singer, still looking for her way. She hadn't even put out a music video yet when she first came out with that. The only records that she had out at that time were Self Made, which were featuring Gucci Mane and Trina. And she also had a record with Missy Elliott called Faking It. Both records was on the radio. They didn't do too well, but they were on the radio. Then she came out with Fallen, which was like a mid-tempo ballad that she released in 2010 on the Hits Committee record label, of course. And um, it came out in 2010. But by this point, you know, she was still, you know, saying that... Um, still, still saying that he put his hands on her. Um, she also had another... Um, record called i want out when she was trying to get off of jive records you know what i'm saying um she was like how could he hit me when i loved him so i could still feel his hands wrapped around my throat and i hate him that was about myth hits long before she was on love and hip-hop atlanta then he got married to toya and i remember that she did like this um this remix to lil wayne's how to love and then there was one she talked about every man that she dated and then um, she said in the song, "What? how did it go? She said, then I dated this P-U-S-S-Y that thought that he was Diddy, but I shut this shit down, no more hits committee. But next time I'll be a little smarter, living off my budget, trying to keep up with the Carters. She was referring to myth hits taking her budget and spending it on chains and rings. Again, long before she was on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, this was 2011, before she even got on anybody's TV screen. At this point, Kate Michelle released three singles. She released Fallen, she released I Just Can't Do This, which was, which was a song written by R. Kelly, which was suspected to be about her relationship with Memphis. Then she put out another record called How Many Times, the last record that she put out on uh, the Jive you know, records, uh, Jive Records label, okay? So then she got on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta in 2012, and she was up here telling her story, a story that I already knew about because, again, I was following Kate Michelle's career long before she got on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. See, that's the thing about me, see. Um, a lot of folks don't know nothing about this girl's story, but I've been, know I've been knowing about it. I've been knowing about it from the very beginning. She's been talking about it since she came out, okay? Like, period. She came out. 
One on the first episode, she was sitting there talking to Rashida and she was talking about this relationship. Most people didn't even know who the hell she was talking about because once again, most people did not know who Myth Hits was back then. A lot of people did not know him. A lot of people did not know who he was, but she never said his name on TV, never said his name, never did anything. However, those of us that surfed the internet and those of us who were fans of K. Michelle, we definitely knew who the hell he was, right? So then after the first episode came out, he went on a rampage and started making tweets and saying that she was Pinocchio, that she met, that he made her and all of this other stuff. So it became a big thing. Every episode, he'll come out and he'll say something. He'll come out and then he'll say something. Not only did he come out and say something, but then his wife, his then wife, Toya, said something as well. And it became this full on battle between Kate Michelle, Toya, Rashida, everybody, Tamar Braxton, everybody in that whole little Atlanta clique was coming after her um, on behalf of Myth Hits. There was a lawsuit filed against Kay, Mona Scott Young, and VH1. Um, there was a deposition put out. Um, where it says that he admitted to putting his hands on her, where he admitted, um, allegedly admitted to spending her budget. She won the case, and that was the end of it. Then he went on marriage boot camp with Toya, and he displayed abusive behavior towards Toya. And there were rumors that he put his hands on her as well. He went on Eyalla Fix My Life, and he tried to say that K. Michelle ruined his life and all of this other stuff, tried to put all the blame on her. But I just feel like this is the same narcissistic, abusive person that reminds me of my stepfather who tried to really pretend like he didn't really do nothing when I lived in the house with the man and he tried to pretend like he didn't put his hands on nobody when we all know that he put his hands on my mama like let's not play with me you know what I'm saying like let's not play those games you already know what's going on you already know what's up so Carlos didn't have to tell K. Michelle to do a damn thing Carlos didn't have to tell her to do nothing Now I know that Carlos is under fire right now and I know a lot of people got a whole lot to say about Carlos a lot of people do but Carlos didn't have to do anything because Kay had already said this about you. You had been trying to clear your name for many, many years. I mean, let's not forget that you were the one who jumped out of the window when Kay Michelle first came on Love and Hip Hop and told her story. She never said your name. So why did you feel the need for you to get up there and say something? Then you went and filed this lawsuit against this girl thinking that she was going to get something out of it and you didn't get anything out of it. All you got was a nothing. <laughs> That's what you got. I'm just trying to understand why you felt the need to even say anything. And now you're about to open this shit back up. And um, with Kay being in such a great place in life at this particular point, I just I would just hope that she don't respond to him because this is what he wants. He wants a response out of her. He wants so badly for her to have um a response and say this and say that. And it's just no, it's it's just not it's just not it. You know what I mean? Like, no, like, don't sit up here and play these games. Don't sit up here and do all this bullshit. You just need to sit up here and live your life, whatever life you got left, and keep it moving. I don't know why he always running his mouth and always opening his mouth, always bringing up shit. Like, what is the fucking point of you bringing it up? Like, come on now. And then on top of that, you want to bring up Carlos and how he made her do this. But Carlos is one of the executive producers of the show that Kate Michelle got out right now on Lifetime, My Killer Body. He's a part of that production team. So what are you talking about? Nah, you just want to jump on the bandwagon because everybody else is dragging Carlos. You just want to jump on the bandwagon and, and say, oh, yeah, because he made K do this. He made K do that. He made her do this. He made her do that. Nah, we're not even going to play those games here. We're not going to play those games. 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 Okay, we not finna play those games. Period. We not. You know what you did. You know what was out there already. So just move on. Like what the fuck? Like, but this is somebody who's begging for some attention. This is somebody who wants a problem. He he been wanting to get at K Michelle for the longest time, and it's just not working. She's still winning. She's still doing her thing, and and that was something that you said that she would never do. So I'm gonna need for you to really stop. Okay. Like, please. 
But anyways, you guys, that's pretty much all I got to say about K Michelle and, and Miff Hits. I'm so I'm so glad that K ain't said nothing yet because this man ain't nothing but a trigger for her. And he just need to grow up and move the fuck on and stop trying to blame everybody for what the fuck he did. Okay. It came out in the court documents that you put your hands on her. So just move on. We seen you, I mean, you give abusive ass teas, okay? When you was calling K Michelle Pinocchio and saying that you made her, that's something that, that Ike Turner would have said. You giving Ike Turner teas when you said that the way you acted on marriage boot camp with Toya and you was lunging at her like you was finna hit her on camera. Who's to say? What 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 do we know? You could have did way more than that off camera. So what the fuck you talking about, Mip Hits? But however, y'all, I think that's all I got on that, y'all. Be sure this is be your boy Scott about Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also, be sure to click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever video drops. If you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down in the description box down below. With that being said, I hope you guys are having a happy, happy, happy hump day. Okay? And um, I'll see you guys for the next one. And I'm signing out, and I will leave you guys with two promos, one from Nova Cosmetics and another one from the Thirst Trap Boys on production, The Queen's Corner. I'm out here, you guys. Bye-bye.